score one for personal rapid transit here at the WVU Coliseum. At least one of us has made it to the game. Virginia and WVU and uh, I think, oh, there's Dino Gaudio. How was your stroll? Hey, I made it. We're ready to go. Yeah, let's do it. I mean, it took you long <laughs> enough, honestly. Well, it took my time. Slow pace, like UVA. So so what are you going to look for in this game tonight? Jason, I think the biggest stat we'll look at is turnovers for Virginia. If Virginia doesn't turn the basketball over, they'll be right there. 15 or more turnovers doesn't bode well for the Cavaliers. Nine a game is what they put up normally. They had a season high in this game last year. They lost 66-57, turned it over 14 times. Place is already pretty wild on a Tuesday night. A, a great atmosphere in the Coliseum. Jack Salt, Sagaba Konate to tip it up. And we're off from Morgantown. West Virginia has it first with Lamont West. Something to look for early with Virginia's pack line defense. They'll try to double the post to negate West Virginia's inside game. Let's see how Kanate handles it. Two senior guards pass and catch and score on the opening possession. Daxter Miles Jr. for two. Now, how does Virginia handle the press? I, I think it's really important that they have good spacing and use all 94 feet of the court, Jason. When we pressed, when I was at Wake Forest, teams that brought everybody in the backcourt helped us because our rotations were shorter. Virginia has struggled to score at points this year, about 70 and a half per game in this 8-0 start. They won that grinder against Wisconsin 49-37 recently. But the defense has been the calling card. Carter the post feed and off the deflection. This will go to Virginia. Well, big matchup early. You're seeing Devin Hall, Virginia's best defensive player, taking on Javon Carter one-on-one. -on -one. I, I always say, Jason, this is a team game, but it's played by individuals. you got to try to win your individual matchup, and that's a big matchup in this game. The turnovers are so important. 22-plus per game for WVU, and there is an unforced error from Virginia. Well, it all starts with pressure on the ball, West Virginia's, press Virginia's defense, and then they deny the entry pass. There's no free ends in this game here tonight. And we talked to Tony Bennett about who he was most comfortable with handling the ball. He said, look, some guys I'm a little bit more comfortable, but everybody's had good moments and bad moments. That might be chancy in a game like this. But he has Ty Jerome out there taking the basketball. That's his point guard. Carter misses the three. Kanate got a hand on it, but it's pried away by Hall for Virginia. And here is Jerome, who you were talking about, the sophomore on a new Rochelle, New York. Virginia on offense, blocker, mover. Two screeners on the lane line and three cutters coming off. How about Kanate? He's been very active early in this game for West Virginia, the sophomore out of the country of Mali in Africa. Moment by moment, Dino, we're going to see who's leading essentially in pace of play in this game, don't you think? No question. Tempo is huge in this basketball game. Foul drawn down low by West, and he'll go to the free throw line. Well, I, I love what Kanate did right there. They doubled him. He looked right across the lane to his teammate, and it was a wonderful pass. Like, when you're looking at Virginia doubling the post big, big, as we see Coach Huggins here, getting down on the backside is important. Bob Huggins, who you think eventually will be a Hall of Famer, 826 wins to his credit so far. Hey, hey not if, when. I, we don't have to sell this guy <laughs> getting in the Hall of Fame. I think before it's all said and done, he will be third in wins behind Coach K and Jim Beheim. I really believe that. you got to work a couple more years now, maybe three or four. Well, he didn't look like he was going to work a shooter on. He, he looked like he just got out of the forest after taking a couple of hours hunting for himself. Was he beautiful or what? It was like you didn't know whether he was going fishing with the outfit he had on in the hat or whether he was coming to the shoot around. One of the great storytellers in college basketball, isn't he? 
just just beautiful. Another turnover for Virginia and a little unsettled the Cavaliers these first couple of possessions. Well, you, you, you're not upset with that turnover right there as, as he steps out of bounds because it, it's not a turnover with leads to a run out, Jason. Tony Bennett's not happy with it, but better that than the other. It's not three points. Little inside triangle by West Virginia. Off the feed from Carter, a three for West. Not ideal right now for Virginia with a couple of turnovers in four possessions. The way you control tempo is with your offense. Ball down the lane, missed it. Tempo the other way. Miles and Carter, 225 combined games played. They're so comfortable together in that backcourt. Well, Bob Huggins has two senior guards who are just bulldogs. Oh. Miles missed the jumper, and that's going to go on Virginia and Ty Jerome. But when you talk these two teams, a dichotomy in styles. You're looking at Virginia, first in the nation with fewest points allowed. And look at the possessions, last in the country with 60, almost 62 possessions a game. Now let's go down to the bottom. WVU, almost 90 points a game. Jason, top 25 in the country in number of possessions. Two completely different styles of basketball. In your experience, when you watch games involving teams that are so different, does speed generally win out? What do you think about that? I, I think what you're talking about, speed and athleticism usually dictate. And I think right now the advantage is to West Virginia in that area. But I think on the road, a young Virginia team just needs to settle down a little bit. Tony Bennett in his ninth season at Virginia, two-time National Coach of the Year. His team gets it off the offensive foul against Allen, and a knock away by Miles to force Virginia to reset. Well, when you inbound the ball in that deep corner, it's like you have four defenders, the two trappers, the baseline, and the sideline. UVA very fortunate right there on that possession. And remember, during shoot-around, Tony Bennett told us the guy that he wants to inbound the ball is Ty Jerome. He's off the floor right now, and Virginia is getting absolutely hounded. That's a 10-second call. Shot clock was at 20, and they rise in Morgantown for a 10-second call. When your man leads you to trap, then you have to run right behind him so that the outlet pass out of the double team is a short pass. Still nothing on the board for Virginia in the first three minutes and change. Carter wanted to wrap it around. He knew Kanate was open but couldn't get it there. Really good ball screen defense by the Cavaliers. I love how the big guy showed hard. And when you're playing ball screen defense, five guys have to guard the ball screen. Good help defenders in the lane for Virginia. To Virginia, where are you going to for a basket? Look for Cal Guy. He hasn't really seen the ball so far in the first four minutes. This is Paul on the drive and drop off this dunk. And they get a foul on the attempt by Diakite. Wow. 7 0 West Virginia, the early lead at home. ESPN's exclusive presentation of college basketball is brought to you by Phillips 66, proud sponsor of Big 12 basketball, and Aleve Direct Therapy. Get drug-free, deep penetrating, lower back pain relief. We thank you all for your contributions already to V-Week, which rolls on here in Morgantown, and no field goals so far for Virginia. The Akaite has to finish that play right there. I'm not sure how much of a foul that was. He might have got hit with the lower body. But you got shots like that right at the rim. You need to finish those. By the way, our next game, a matchup of old Big East rivals on ESPN. Syracuse takes on UConn. Streaming live on the ESPN app. And, uh, join us for a uh, Big East reunion. 
later on and, tonight. And that'll be a good one. Syracuse really struggling at the three-point line on offense and defense the last few games. Lost to Kansas at first loss of the year down in Miami. Another open look for three, and it's going to go against West Virginia off the miss from West, who's already hit a three today. Well, when you're playing West Virginia in a Bob Huggins team, when we were at Xavier and played them at Cincinnati, man, it is a war on the boards. Virginia has to do a good job of sticking their backsides in there and boxing out because WVU will really hurt you on the offensive glass. 0 for 3, first seven possessions. Hoping for West Virginia's sake it's not a canary in a coal mine for the rest of this game. Diakite out to Hall with the drop off for two and a foul, and Diakite has all four for the Cavaliers. And it was and it was terrific dribble, dribble penetration. There's the drive, lifts the big guy. Wonderful dunk down. I, I like how the Akite played through contact. Some guys try to avoid it, avoid it, absorb the contact, complete the conventional three-point play. Soccer player himself, born in Guinea. Completes the three-point play, so all five for Diakite, and Virginia's back in it. Now, unlike West Virginia, Virginia keeps everything tight in their pack line defense. Watch them converge on the ball all night long, and this is a turnover, West Virginia. Good dribble penetration. Yeah, stay, stay on the floor, you accomplish more. We would tell guys, don't ever leave your feet to pass. When the ball gets in the paint against that back line defense, the cavalry just comes. It, it, it is. You know why? Just because we've got four guys are in there anyways. They're packed into the lane. That's the whole idea. You're inviting it. <laughs> Absolutely. Kyle Guy, catch and shoot for the lead. And a rebound couldn't be held on by Wilkins. Well, I know this. Tony Bennett is happy with that shot. It was off a dribble drive, a kick out to his best shooter. Pretty good offense for the Cavaliers. 45 and a half percent from three for the year for Kyle Guy. Sophomore is up to about 16 and a half points a game to start the year. Undefeated Virginia at 8 and 0, West Virginia 7 and 1, with its only loss in the opener to Texas A&M in Germany. Batted away and a foul call. It's going to go against Diakite on the overplay of Bender. One of the things when you're playing pack line defense, you don't extend your defense, but you don't allow passes in the pack. That's why Diakite was denying that pass inside the three point line. Where's the best place to attack the pack line defense? You know what you got to do, Jake? You got to try. We ran pack line when I was at Wake Forest. Yep. I, I learned it from Tony's dad, Dick Bennett. You got to try to space the defense out from sideline to sideline. Use the width of the court, which creates longer or wider gaps to drive the basketball. Tough shot went down for West. He has seven of the nine for West Virginia. Boy, Carter on the ball. Tenacity is a great virtue to have. This kid has it. Defensive player of the year seems like every year in the Big 12. As that three swirled out for Hall, they reload him. I really think Tony wants to go deeper into the shot clock with his offense. Guy doesn't seem to high off the window, and Diakite resets it. Well, that's West Virginia basketball right there, offensive boards. Guy, he's really looking for his shot. It doesn't have it so far. Carter behind the back, nearly traveled. Looks like he got caught on his hip. Might have been a carry. Boy, they helped so well and so quickly, Virginia. On defense, kids think they need to watch their man. On defense, the ball tells you where to be, and they react so well defensively. 
Terrific drop right there. Isn't that interesting to watch two teams who are so comfortable with what they do clash? It, it, it is. As we know, West Virginia, 94 feet pressure into the ball. UVA guarding 16 feet and in. That's what the pack line is. Carter off the bounce, missed it. Jerome back in for Virginia with the rebound. You'll see those cutters coming off of the postman. Down screens by the post guys. There's a cutter to the corner. Ball got himself open and canned the jumper. And Jace, the way he got open, the defense shortcut the screen. He read it, flared to the corner. A perfect offensive play. There were three or four players trying to get open on the baseline off those post players you were talking about during that possession, and finally Hall did. Well, Tony's dad created that too. It's called block remover, and what it is is you're coming off of down screens. The blockers, in essence, are screeners in more modern terminology, and they do a great job of that. Carter off the spin. And the rebound for Virginia and Wilkins. First four minutes went to West Virginia. Next four to UVA. And the Cavaliers take the lead on that bucket. Boy, to win on the road, you have to play with poise. They got behind early, showed their poise, and now the Cavaliers up right now by one. Two totally different styles, Virginia and West Virginia. Let's hear what the soundtrack of their game sounds like. Exactly, exactly. Well, one's, one's a march and one's a dirge <laughs> is really what it's like there. I mean, you get one that's so slow and one that's so fast, and then they come together, and you wonder what the game tempo is going to feel like. Yeah, I, I, I tell you, West Virginia plays at a frenetic pace. There's a three for James Bolden, the sophomore for West Virginia. Well, he is instant offense off the bench. 47% from threes this season for James Bolden. Now, what we saw earlier, what we've seen such thus far, uh, Justin, was, Jason, we've seen is, is three turnovers early for West Virginia. They go down 7 nothing. No turnovers since. And then they went on a 10-4 run. And that was the first bucket for West Virginia in about two and a half minutes. So each team's won one four-minute span so far. A absolutely. Jerome couldn't get rid of Miles. Three to shoot. One to shoot. They do say it got off in time, but no good for Johnson. The Rutgers transfer. Now West Virginia is settling into that slower pace. The Cavaliers won. There's the double team. Canate gets it out of there for two for Miles. When they're doubling the post, Nigel Johnson is the bottom of the eye, the help defender in a restricted area yard. He has to do a better job of that. We would tell guys, it's like hockey, clean up the crease. Get that big guy out of there. There's two and a foul on the other end for the Cavaliers. So back and forth they go. This is a one possession game as Hall has had quite the first half. Hugs can't be happy with how they're guarding the ball one on one because a lot of dribble drive right now for from Virginia, which is getting them buckets and getting them to the free throw line. Bob Huggins said to us in shooter, he said, I've either got really experienced guards and forwards who aren't as experienced, or I got the forwards, I don't have the guards. <laughs> keeps happening to him that way. I, I, I know one thing. He, he's got some good young guys on this team. Seven 
sophomores and a freshman in Teddy Allen. Not a lot of front court depth. Obviously, their strength is Carter and Miles, those two bulldog of guards that Hutz has. And then in January, the expectation is that they'll get Issa Ahmad back from his ineligibility sometime in mid-January. Difference maker. A difference maker for this West Virginia team. Bolden. Couldn't get a second one, and they're going to get a foul on Panate on the rebound action. He has to watch because he has struggled with foul problems early in the season. If this is going to be a tight whistle, that favors Virginia. It, it really does. It, it really does, and I didn't see much there either. Hug's not happy with the call. How many times are you going to say Hug's not happy tonight? Well, I if, if, I, if every time he's unhappy, if I said it, it would be too many. Because he's say. always going to be unhappy. <laughs> Salt the miss on the front end. And very quickly, here comes Carter. But you're seeing one of the reasons why Virginia is so good defensively. Their transition defense is outstanding. Hunter, the freshman on Carter. Great help, defense. And a steal for Virginia and Jerome. The rare team that'll press even off a turnover. Well, they read it. Two guys at the ball come together. They'll go ahead and trap that. Guy had it slapped away off the pass and stolen by Harris. Kyle Guy still doesn't have a shot team. Amazing. And, and they're still right there, 14 13. Over three, no makes for Guy. Long jumper for Miles, and this is whose ball? Talk it over. It's going to be a Virginia ball. Afternoon doubleheader on Saturday. Duke, B.C., noon Eastern, Chestnut Hill, Indiana, and Louisville thereafter. A couple of ACC teams in action. Both games on ESPN and streaming live on the app. And that sound you hear is roughly 14,000 <laughs> West Virginians cheering the crew here. West Virginians rather unhappy. getting ridden by Bolden and he's gonna go to the free throw line well everybody knows that, that with the new rules you can't extend can't put a hand on a dribbler you want to pressure the basketball but pressure without foul you know it's interesting as we talked about this season as a group all the announcers and we heard about the new rules from JD Collins the first team that came up was oh West Virginia's not gonna like that game. It, the, they've been playing like that, Jason, with those rules for a year or two now. So you adjust. I would tell guys, listen, it, it's really important to understand who you're playing against. If, if the guy is, is quicker than you, that's fine. That's not the sin. The sin is not recognizing it. Now, Bolden is quick, but you got to make sure that he keeps Ty Jerome in front of him so he doesn't have to use his hands. Soccer defense, move your feet. Sounds so easy that way, right? <laughs> Bolden got tripped, and they get a foul against Guy. I didn't think we were in the Bronx, but the cheers sounds like it. <laughs> oh, boy. Wow, I mean, well, we've had a couple questionable calls early in this one. Dino, I think you just fouled me, tapped me on the shoulder to get my attention. Ten on the shot clock. Carter to the corner. Nice find. And a shot that wouldn't go down for West. And this is going to be West Virginia ball. Still don't know who's going to win the tempo battle. What we do know is we have a dandy on our hands at the WVU Coliseum. A couple of good games. And uh, West Virginia using the double to its advantage. Well, if we freeze it there. Virginia, one of the staples of their defense is doubling the post big, big. 
And the guy on the opposite lane right there, Nigel Johnson, that's his man cutting to the basket right there, Daxter Miles. He's got to take that away, but I thought WDU did a wonderful job of handling it. Four turnovers apiece through the first 12 minutes or so. No clear winner in tempo so far. Miles rimmed it out. One of the best things you could do on the defensive side of the floor is contest shots. Make them miss, don't hope they miss. That was a wonderful contest. Rough shooting start for Miles this year. Six for 31 for three, under 20%. Down low, Virginia gets a pair That's for Diakite. He has had a very nice first he half. Is, he took the words out of my mouth. He is playing really well early for UVA on the road. Seven straight for the Cavaliers to go up three. Kid right out of Blue Ridge School, just right next door to Charlottesville. It's a great find for Tony Bennett in his backyard. Carter, fade away. Got it over the freshman Hunter. The elevation, and you said it, the fade away negates the contest. How pretty was that? And it leads to a steal. Turnover into a jumper that wouldn't go. Carter the follow, and he's got four in a row. It's a Tuesday night in December, and it sounds like Big Monday. <laughs> Johnson had it absolutely eaten alive by Kanate. Carter's feeling it. Maybe too much. And this is a turnover, West Virginia. How yeah, about the senior Carter? Well, this guy is a bulldog for Bob Huggins. The fadeaway, the pull up, wonderful elevation on the, on the shot. And you know what? Nigel Johnson better put a body on that guy. Offensive rebound from, from the West Virginia point guard. And you would think he'd know it. His father was a four-year NFL defensive back. If he's going to learn to body anybody, he's going to do it from dad. You better not ball watch against West Virginia. You get in trouble real fast. Yeah, when that shot goes up, go find your man and make sure you put a body on him. Hunter. One and done. West the rebound. Couple of seniors, Carter and Hall. Carter wanted it back, finally gets it. Miles got fouled, two shots coming. I, I thought Devin Hall's defense, to be honest with you, was outstanding. He was on Carter, they dribble handoff, he made the switch defensively. I don't know, Dino. You know what? We were talking a lot about Cylinder this year. He has to be able to go up, Daxter Miles, and then come down. We have a pretty good officiating crew here. Final fours all over uh, the place. Roger Ayers, two Final Fours, 18 NCAA tournaments. Kip Kissinger, 15 NCAA tournaments. And then Ron Groover, we're talking about a guy, one Final Four, 12 NCAA. So they got they, they know how big this game is. They have pretty good officials on this game. Just hard to officiate this game, the way West Virginia plays up and down. I think even further than that, it's hard, it's hard to be consistent in this game because you're essentially getting two different styles depending on who has the ball. It, it, it really is. Now you look at the scoreboard and it's 18-17, you're thinking, eh, Tony Bennett, Virginia's happy with that right now. What do you think in general? Who's had the pace favor them for the most part today? I, I think for the most part, my feeling is, and maybe because we're in this building, it's West Virginia. It's a foul on Carter. That's his second personal, so a one and one coming for the Cavaliers. And we would always say when we were pressing, fellas, fouling negates hustle. You're, you're playing hard, you're moving fast, but let's make sure we don't foul. Fouling negates hustle did there and led to a free throw for a hunter the freshman from Philly 
Now, here's the other thing when you're pressing. There's an accumulative effect to it, too. We might not see this rear its head until maybe seven, eight minutes left in the second half because it wears on you. Miles in rhythm for three. Up to 15 points a game this year, Daxter Miles Jr. Extra feed, Wilkins got fouled, he'll get two shots. Senior guards will get you a long way, won't they? They, they? they really do, and they play with such confidence and they play off of each other. You're seeing the little flip back pass from Javon Carter to Miles. When you play together so long, there's just a chemistry there. These two seniors have it. For the first time on that possession, we saw West Virginia go zone. In Virginia, perfect offense. Short corner, attack the basket. To be good defensively, you need to be back, set, and moving into the ball. And nobody does a better job of that than Virginia. You can't play defense taking arrows in the back. Carter just got all the way through it and tossed it over the backboard. And he's looking at... He didn't get fouled on that. I, I, I think he's looking to hugs for help, but great crossover. Maybe the body for Hunter. No, Very I'm not maybe. giving. I'm not giving him that one. You're not gonna. No. <laughs> what about the cylinder? <laughs> Bender out on Diakite. 15 to shoot. And that's going to be a foul against Miles. That's his second. And that time, he edged Johnson to the sideline. He didn't have a place to land. That's a foul. That, that's that 1-3-1 one, one defense that we're seeing. It's extended. Johnson's very fortunate right there. A little shot. A little shot. Sold it, but a little shot. Johnson just six for 11 from the line this year, and that one's no good. When you see zone defense and extended, and a sort of extended defense like we're seeing West Virginia play, fake a pass to make a pass. Because when you fake a pass, five guys will move. You just can't stare at the receiver and throw it to him like Johnson did. He's fortunate to be at the line. He gets one of two this time on an average of six. He has his first point, and moving to four minutes to go, first half, it's a one-point game. The series dates back to 1916. Carter off the spin, closed off nicely. Oh, a big block by Diakite on Harler. That's a great pass on offense, but better defense by the Cavaliers. And a bone-crushing screen by Diakite. And here comes Carter. On the gas pedal. For two. Carter. Number one thing in transition defense, stop the basketball. You've got to build a little wall around him at the top of the key. This guy is explosive. He is the heart and soul of West Virginia. Aggressive. He is fearless. That's why the Mountaineers are up by three. Guys for Nova. Rick, thank you. Here 24-21 West Virginia. And the Mountaineers average about 76 possessions per game. They're currently not on pace for that. So just strictly by that metric, you'd imagine Virginia is winning the pace of play battle so far. They are. And we're seeing West Virginia in their 1-3-1 defense right now. Opposite is always open. Diagonal and down against the 1-3-1. Good guy to Hall with nine to shoot. Jack Salt, it's a travel. Well, when Jack Salt recognizes that he has Javon Carter on him, just take your time, back him in. A little bit off balance, Jason. He needs to play the game lower. The lower you are, the better balance that you have. 
Best offensive game for him this year was six in the opener. He's averaging just three, more of a defensive player as Kanate goes quickly and misses. So now where does the offense come from for Virginia? Inside out like you saw right there. Guy still over in the game. Carter leading the break by himself, drops it off to the wing. And the miss for Harler, the local product. Central Catholic High School, my old school. Your old stopping Wheeling. grounds here. Wheeling, West Virginia. Guy, catch and shoot, and he can't buy one right now. West, got it! West, He is one of Hodge's favorite players. Bouncy, long. And he can make threes, as we just saw. He had struggled early this year, just 27% from three, but he has two this evening and a six-point lead. West Virginia, active hands on the ball. You can't let guys window shot. All the step through, and we have a turnover. It's a three-second call. I think that's the first three-second call I've seen this year thus far. Right to left. Boy, terrific stroke right there from that young man. But we might have to put the three-second call on a wanted poster. Yeah, you, you, you rarely you see that. I think Jack Salt in the zone was, was in the lane a little too long. Both of these teams on defense have an active hand shadowing the ball. Carter opposite, Harler no. This is West Virginia basketball. Eight to shoot off the inbound. Well, the other thing I love about Javon Carter is he, he looks for others. Two nice passes to Chase Harler, the wheeling West Virginia product. Carter, a Chicago kid, went to Proviso East out of Maywood, Illinois. And, and when you're a point guard, your decision-making is just as important as your skill set. And Javon Carter's decision-making all season thus far has been outstanding. Roger Ayer is going to go to the monitor here, but the all-time steals leader, Big 12 Defensive Player of the Year, three-time All-Big 12 Defensive Team. And, and, and he was on the All-Big 12 defensive team as a freshman. I mean, his first year to come in and play defense like that, you know how rare that it, is. It is. Defense is understanding the most efficient way to close the distance between you and the offensive player. He has a special talent to do that. It's like Richard Sherman in the NFL or Josh Norman who plays with the Redskins. Those guys are outstanding defenders because they understand that. They know how to close out. He's magnificent at that. Question, by the way, is whether or not this ball hit the rim. Did it glance? And it looks like it did. I agree with you. I think it did. Yeah, that was a redirect, right? It, it, it was. Not by much. If they wouldn't have painted the rims, that extra little bit of paint on there grazed it. <laughs> that, was, that was a three-coat <laughs> shot clock reset. Yeah. yeah. Now this final minute 34 of the half, a little danger zone here for Virginia. We're down six right now. We want to go in down maybe four. We don't want to go down 10 or 11. Roger Ayers will come over and say hi to Gino Gaudio. What do you have, Dino? He said the, the ball did hit the other side, and I, and I told him good. <laughs> How many times do you say that when you were not, coaching? Not, not very often. Not very often. I sense a trend here with analysts. A little kinder to the officials in this chair. Kanate did not hit the rim, but the follow goes down for Harris. And Devin Hall did not box out. Hall trying to get it back and does. Great offense. And it was great offense because they went to the middle with Isaiah Wilkins. It collapsed the defense to the foul line, and he kicked it out. By 15 and 1 records. 
That's the 19th meeting all time. Each has won nine. Carter, the spin, lost the ball, and here comes Virginia. I, I can't speak highly enough of Virginia's ball screen defense. When those guards are coming off quick guards, they're bouncing them towards the midcourt line. Just awareness, or what is it? They're, 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 just, they're just so well drilled at that. They do the same thing every time, hard hedge. Catch and shoot, Hall wanted a second. Uh, and it's out of bounds to Virginia. Final possession of the half to the Cavaliers. So we got 27 seconds. UVA wants to take this thing with maybe five or four so they have a chance at a second shot opportunity. Time out on the floor. We'll step Virginia. aside for the last Virginia possession of half number one. Prototypical offense for Virginia to get that last three, right? Well, when you see zone, one of the things you could do is go short corner or the middle. They got the basketball right in the middle. You saw it collapse the white shirts into the middle of the defense. The kick out, that's really good zone offense. West just took one step back toward the paint, and it was over. So now if you're Tony Bennett in this huddle, you have one possession left first half. What are you doing? Well, he's telling these guys two things. If we see 1-3-1, one, one, this is what we're going to run. If WVU comes out and man to man, we want to run our blocker mover offense. We want to take the shot with around five or four. So at least if we miss it, we get a second shot opportunity with an offensive rebound. Saw the numbers from Hall. That's his fourth straight double figure game. And he's got the 11 in less than the first 20 minutes. And if you're West Virginia, you could be really aggressive here with Trappy because you know they want to hold the thing to about the five second mark. Defending Hall. He's going to hold it. Quick advantage, quickness advantage for Hall on Chase Harlow right here. Kick out Hunter. Couldn't knock it down. Two seconds to go, and a foul. Going to go the other way against Virginia. The confused, I think, should be Virginia basketball. Kip Kissinger, when he called the foul, he pointed the other direction. Yes, I, I think he pointed in the wrong direction. It's on Kanate. But if you see Kissinger when he makes the call here, yeah, he, he points the arm he, that he, direction. Yeah, he, he, he knew he, he aired there. Couldn't have worked out much better for Virginia. A foul on Kanate, and we have Hunter at the free throw line. Now, this is an 89% free throw shooter coming into tonight. Now 17 for 19 on the season for DeAndre Hunter. All this kid needs out of Philadelphia, Hunter is just needs more experience. His confidence is growing. And what they love about him is he has the potential to be a great defender. Long, athletic, moves laterally well. He's a big time scorer in high school, about 24 points a game as a high school senior. And that'll do it for the first half. Are you all right with that shot? The I... musket okay. will rattle you if you've not been here very often. 29 26, West Virginia, the halftime lead in Morgantown. Our halftime report follows this. 29-26 at the break at the WVU Coliseum. We asked the question, who's going to win the tempo battle in the first half of this game? I don't think we have an answer yet, do we, Dino? No, no, no we don't, but I think what's happening right now is you're seeing a West Virginia team that's struggling a little bit on the offensive end, and the reason is Virginia's ball screen defense, Jason, has just been superb. Hard heads right there. The big fella, Jack Salt, again, moving his feet defensively. Watch how they bounce the dribbler out towards midcourt. So their bell screen defense has been sensational. And Carter's the guy that doesn't let West Virginia lose. A wonderful fadeaway on the baseline right here. Offensive rebound. The intangibles are what separates guys. He has it to flip back to his backcourt mate. 
really good from Javon Carter thus far in the first half. You know, Virginia is halfway to that turnover number from last year in this game of 14. That was a season high, but the points off turnovers have not been there, in part because Virginia gets back well, right? They, they, they really do. Their transition defense is outstanding. And I talked to Larry Harrison at halftime coming out, and he said, we got a guard without Fallon. Virginia has 12 points at the free throw line, rebound, and listen, when we attack that Virginia defense, let's make a one more pass when we get into the gap. Devin Hall had 11 of those 26 for Virginia. Kyle Guy still has no field goals made in the game. Drive and kick to the corner. Extra feed. Jerome floated it in. You're exactly right. The one more pass. Very unselfish from the Cavaliers. Ty Jerome was in foul trouble in that first half. Two personals, only two points. That was his first field goal of the night. He's got four. Miles got bumped, and they're going to call it on Salt on the cut for Miles. Good players have a good act. That was a great act right there by Taxter Miles. Sell it, and he did. He got hit. He, he, he got hit, but good players, good actors. I would think there was contact. Who created it is still in question, and there is a three that falls for Wesley Harris, his first triple. Carter in Paul's pocket right on the catch. Amazing how the quickness that he displays. And now he's on Jerome. He took it from him and a foul called on Jerome. That's his third. Our colleague Fran Fraschilla, I talked to him. He had this team. He had this team at the Advil carry. He goes, do not spin dribble on Javon Carter. Here's the spin. I gotcha. That's why he leads this, what, in the history of the school, most steals. Yeah, he's a steals leader. And isn't it amazing, though, he was hounding Hall, and then it was like he just teleported to get on Jerome's back. <laughs> he's everywhere. <laughs> Wes got his feet set, and it was deflected. So here comes Virginia down four. Good closeout defense by Isaiah Wilkie. High hand, contested the shot. Long step from Hall, got it on the rim for two. You know what I love about the Euro step. Those guys that are standing there to take charge, you're actually with the Euro, you go right, left, right around them. That's exactly what we just saw Hall do. He has 13 in the game for Virginia. And the crowd reacts to the foul on Guy. When you're coming down, young players, guards, you got to put this in your offensive repertoire. The Euro, that gets him around Kanate, and he's able to finish with his off team. Devin Hall, one of the seniors on this team, as this is out of bounds, and it's going to Virginia. Bob Huggins talking it over with Ron Groover. You know what? He didn't say much today in the shoot around. Uh -huh. He saved all those words up for tonight. <laughs> He's got to have some in reserve <laughs> for a close game. And here's a foul against the Mountaineers. Maybe some of those words are going to come out. Like we said in the first half, West or Virginia is 12 for 16 from the free throw line, nearly half of their points. The Mountaineers got to keep defending, but without fouling. By the way, Bob Huggins didn't say anything on that foul. He just looked up at the scoreboard as if to say, what's the total already? How many we got? Get your hands out of your defense. Turnover, scooped up by Carter. The rim run blocked by Wilkins. Miles kick out, Carter reload. Top players in the country, Javon Carter. He just plays so hard and with so much energy. Cannot take the rebound. Here come the Mountaineers. Carter 
got Wilkins in the air and turned him around. He's just having fun. Right They're going to go flat now because they have an advantage with Carter on Wilkins. And he got him in the air to draw the foul. Nifty. Virginia foul for the number 21, Isaiah Wilkins. Javon Carter just plays with so much energy. Just outraces those guys to the basketball. Good block. Sometimes they get their shot blocked, they dip their head. No way. He gets the senior to the corner, they find him. And the other component of that is he could have allowed Virginia to touch up on the turnover and just take in the ball, but he wanted points. Jace, you're exactly right. He just he just plays with such energy. And, and the thing he does, I, I was lucky to coach some really good point guards, Chris Paul and Jeff Teague, who's with the Timberwolves, and Ishmael Smith, who's with the Pistons. Like, those guys... He gives the other guys on the team confidence when he's out there. They're a little braver, if you know what I mean, when he's out there. Who was the guy that did that most that you saw? It was Chris Paul. It, it was. Yeah, it really was. He was just, he was a lion of a leader. There he is in the backcourt, making life difficult on Johnson. They just barely got it across. No, they didn't. Roger Ayers has a 10-second violation. The eye of the hurricane in West Virginia colors, Bob Huggins. This place is rocking. You know, really intelligent fans because they know what the press does for this team. And they feed into it they as really well. They really do. They really do. Off the third Virginia turnover of the half, Miles lipped it out and a foul on the rebound against West. Boy, it looks like Isaiah Wilkins came down on his uh, left ankle there. Boy, that thing was halfway down, wasn't it? This place, it's got a cement roof for sound purposes. <laughs> we could have had a little crumbling. And with the students behind us, I could barely hear you, let alone uh, anybody out there. He came down on uh, Paul's foot. I like it. Hanging in there. With the sound of this building, can you imagine... The first ever event was a Grand Funk Railroad concert. Imagine how loud that was. 1970, they built this thing. And they just put $26 million into this, Jason. The, the locker rooms are just outstanding. Hall with a ball fake. And he tried to push it to the corner, eight to shoot. When we come back, but again, the first four minutes of each half have gone to West Virginia so far to the tune of a seven-point lead. The incidence rate of cancer is so high in this country as West Virginia leads by seven, and, and it touched very closely the heart of Bob Huggins, the head coach of the Mountaineers. You know maybe about his father, Charlie, the Hall of Fame coach in the state of Ohio, but Bob Huggins lost his mother, Norma May, to colon cancer. And he said, look, the, we thought she was going to have less than a week to live, but she lived an extra week so she could make it to her 51st anniversary. Bob Huggins took losing his mom and put it into some positive energy, creating a foundation and raising money for cancer. Part of that was a roast of Bob Huggins, which you were a part of. I was, and it, it, the, the roast was terrific, and the money that was raised for cancer research is really special. What kind of Bob Huggins jokes do you tell? Can you well, tell I, any I of them cannot. on the air? <laughs> I'm lucky I got this job. I can't get fired tonight. <laughs> <laughs> the MCC's not listening. It's cable. Uh, 37-30, West Virginia with the lead. Bob Huggins, I can't imagine what that night was like. Listen to everybody roast him. I mean, he, he, he got cooked. West rimmed it out, and the rebound for Kyle Guy, who has been silent offensively in this game for Virginia on an average of 16 and a half. Guy with Harris in his pocket. Diakite couldn't finish and cannot take the rebound. Nice move, though. I like how he got deep in the lane before he released the shot. He was very effective in the first half. West into the post. Kanate lip 
knocked it out in a foul called against West Virginia. And this being V Week, join ESPN and the V Foundation in the fight against cancer. You can go right now, visit v.org slash donate. All donations benefit the V Foundation for Cancer Research. You heard Bob Huggins' story. He's thinking about the foul disparity right now, but somewhere deep in his heart, uh, he would appreciate, you've got to believe, anything that you can offer for V Week. It, 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 it's a special thing, fighting cancer. And, and we'll cure it. And I think we'll cure it in, in, in my lifetime. There's such ingenuity in science in this country. And one day, with your help, this Hunter's trapped very quickly and got it away to Guy. Boy, deflections, active hands. Just a high heart rate right now for Virginia. Coaching is dealing with 18 to 23 year olds psychologically. And both of these guys on the bench do a pretty good job of that. Single handedly, by the way, Devin Hall is keeping Virginia in this game. If, if Virginia's going to win this game, though, Cal Guy has to step up and make a couple shots. He's still over from the floor, over five from three, as West Virginia gets a couple from West, foot in front of the line. Because West defender helped on that baseline cut. He, he stayed too long in the lane and he was late to recover. Finally, a shot goes down for Kyle Guy. Now, we talked to the staff. Kyle Guy had a couple stitches. That's why he's got that tape on his right hand. They said it hadn't bothered him. He had 21 last game. But let's see if that gets him going now. He came in fifth in the ACC in three-point percentage at over 45 percent. He's one for six today from three. Shooters have to have a short memory. Step back for Miles and a late call on the offensive foul after the ball was in the air. That's the third on Miles. Watch when the call is made, Dino. You know what, I, I think he said he extended his arm. I'm not sure if he did on that possession. You know what, Miles is just so much bigger and stronger than Johnson. He just, he just bumped him off, off his track with his body. Ball off the spin to the lane. Drop off to the corner. Another go. for Guy. There you go. He has emerged and as the go-to guy for this Virginia basketball team. He's come out the second half with renewed concentration. Six in a row. Turnover West Virginia. This is for the lead for the Cavaliers. Guy is open. He's got a third. Get one. That was West Virginia basketball <laughs> turnover run out that Virginia made the three. Nine in a row for Kyle Guy and a lead for his Cavaliers. Carter, the answer! <laughs> right back at you. At the end of the Missouri game, Carter just would not let them lose. He was magnificent. And when they need a big bucket, he steps up and delivers. Now he's in Guy's shirt on the defense. Guy from long range. He missed that one, Jace, because he wasn't on balance. And he, he, knew he wasn't going to be because Carter was winning. Yeah, he, he can make tough shots, but he, he wasn't on balance on that one. I don't know about you, but I'd watch this game twice a year. What a great college basketball game in December. This could be a great college basketball game in March. It very well could be. They played in the NIT before. Kyle Guy on Daxter Miles Jr. Calling for the ball screen. Johnson couldn't finish. Here comes West Virginia. Miles.
Myers with the head up, draws the contact for two shots when we come back. Oh, how fun is this, Tito? Well, I'll tell you what, Cal Guy has found his jumper, bringing Virginia back. But you know what? When you need a big basket for the Mountaineers, this is the guy you go to. He always delivers. He was 0 for 5, but no more Mr. Nice Guy, Dino. Well, you trust your work, we would tell guys. In other words, all the time you put in in the summer and in the fall, it would you, good shooters, Jason, know the shots for them before the ball even gets there. And this kid here gets his hands and feet ready while the ball's in the air. That's why he has such a quick release. And uh, trust your work, he does. Doesn't dip his head, doesn't feel sorry for himself when he starts off tonight. What was it, 0 for 5, 0 for 6? The next possession is the, is the most important one. He plays that way. Yeah, 0 for 5 for 3, 0 for 6 from the floor. And uh, the former Mr. Basketball in Indiana, dad, a former football player who ran track. His uncle was an athlete as well. His great-grandfather, the commissioner of the body that governs Indiana high school sports. So uh, he knows a little something about high-level athletics. Jace, I, I would make our guys all put the, the, on the toe of their shoe, TNP, so that if they ever dip their head and look down, they'd see that, and it meant the next possession. That's what's important. TNP, if he misses a couple shots, don't worry about it. The next possession is the big one. Short memory for a shooter. He's really come back strong. A foul against Bolden. Let's see. What Bob Huggins thinks. Everything's freedom of movement as we know. He had his right arm on him. I like how Virginia is spreading the court, stretching it out with their offensive players. Guy turns it up court on Bolden and he beat him to the spot. Pretty serene night for Jerome offensively so far for Virginia. Diakite splashes down two. I, I, I've I seen this team practice a lot in the preseason the last couple of years and seen him play. He has really improved, playing well tonight. It's a good looking jump shot. It really is. He's made big free throws in the first half. Little flex cut on the baseline. And a foul against Virginia, that's number six. Tomorrow on ESPN, a couple of NBA games you may want to watch. The Warriors without Steph Curry, KD will be there to take on Kemba and the Hornets and Carl Anthony Towns, the T-Wolves against the Clippers. Coverage starts NBA countdown 7 o'clock, also on the ESPN app. Too bad Steph, he twisted his right ankle uh, in their last game. Big game for him, too, coming home to Charlotte where he played at Davidson. Yeah, Dell, such a legend there, as that's an offensive foul against Bolden, who might get himself a technical if he's not careful. Just, just play. If you're trying to officiate and you're barking at the referees, then then, then you can't play. Right, he did he extend the arm. He, he really did. He extended. So six fouls against each team here in the second half, and Virginia comes in a. 78.5% foul shooting team, very strong for the line. Hall draws contact and he will go to the line. Bob Huggins loves Chase Harley. He's one of Huggs' kind of guys. He, he's a tireless worker, relentless effort, solid off the bench. Just has to do a better job, the young guy out of Wheeling, West Virginia, of keeping the basketball in front of him. You used to coach yeah, around these parts. I did, I did. Won a state title here. I, I, coach Prosser left me some good players when uh, he left that high school program, and uh, we were fortunate to win a state championship in 1987. See, Haller came out of the game right now, and you, you know what, Jason, you earn when you're a bench player. Do I have a long rope or a short rope? And you earn it. When you go in the game, if, if, can I play through mistakes? Chase Harler isn't there yet. It changes over the course of the game for Bob Huggins, too, how long the rope is you to match. It, it really is. And in a close game here, Carter late in the shot. Oh, my! 
Wow. Takes and makes tough shots. His offensive game has really improved. We know how good a defender he is. But you know what? He lives in the gym. When we came in today at 11 o'clock, Virginia shot at 11.30. At 11 when I walked in, he was working on his game. Up to 19 points a game this year from 13 and a half last year. Hall step back over Miles, no dice. We're going to have some finish up there. <laughs> Carter, 16 points, eight boards, five assists. Little inside triangle right now. Carter was running the baseline and drew contact from Hunter. He just has such elevation on his shot. Plants that left foot. When you're coming left to right like that, it's imperative that you bring your right shoulder around so you're square to the basket. He does that. Oh, by the way, he's a 91% foul shooter. Bob Huggins always recycles. Drop the bottle over the bench. Two for two for Carter. Going green, Bob Huggins. Three point game, 8.40 to go. Team defense played two separate ways on each side. Absolutely. We're seeing Virginia in the pack, in gaps, quick to the help. West Virginia shot blocking. Six on the shot clock for Carter. He wants to take it. Carter down the lane. That one flipped the rim from Canate, and it's out of bounds to West Virginia. There's the time on the court. 48-45, it feels like March in Morgantown in December. Well, we got a great one here, Brick. 48-45, West Virginia. Not only have Bob Huggins and Tony Bennett been doing it for a long time on their own benches, their 11th and 9th season. But they're the sons of coaches as well. Well, when I was in high school, Jason, I know you're going to think 1920-something, but in the early 70s, I would go to St. John's Arena in Steubenville, Ohio, and watch Charlie Huggins' Indian Valley South teams play in the Ohio tournament. The guy on the right was one of his players, and that dude right there can really play. But it, it, three state championships at Indian Valley South, and any success I had at Wake Forest, I point to Tony's dad. Dick, Dick Bennett really helped me with the pack line defense and uh, incredibly creative mind. Dick Bennett started the pack line defense, blocker, mover, offense. These guys had great mentors. Bob Huggins, by the way, in shoot around today, showed great reverence for the Bennett family as Guy retaliates for three. Kyle Guy with four second half threes to keep Virginia in it. You got to play this game not just with your body, with your mind. That kid right there, really tough mentally. Miss a bunch of shots in the first half. He goes right back to the well. And there, the defense from Diakite to create Virginia's opportunity to tie with a three. They get it in down deep, Diakite. Jerome to the corner for God. He ties the game. How smart is Ty Jerome? He had a good look. His buddy had a better one, and he, he delivered it. Kyle Guy opened 0 for 5 from 3. He has five threes in the second half. Double comes to the post and creates a steal. 
Jerome with Hall to Guy for another. And this is going to go against West Virginia over the back. It started with the big, big double in the post. The close the gate play for Guy. Boy, he gets it off quick. And a wonderful pass from Ty Jerome. Know where the ball belongs. And he found Kai, Cal Guy, who's just been phenomenal in the second half. What a change. Missed front end for Isaiah Wilkins. Where do you go if you're West Virginia? Well, the guy with the ball, we got to find a way to get Javon Carter a shot. Now you got what you got Virginia's best defender on him and Devin Hall. West. Step back for three. I'll be honest with you. I was going to say I'm not happy with that shot, but it was like no, no, no. Yes. Lamont West with 15. Cold-blooded three. Guy changing direction. Short clock now. Jerome and it wiped away. It's a goal 10 on Kanate. They say it was on the way down. Bob Huggins looking to either the scoreboard or the heavens. If I was a West Virginia fan, I'd be booing too. Is that a kind way to say it? I think so. <laughs> Always gentle, you know. Miles off the bounce. Oh, lethal shooting tonight. Jason, really good defense, better offense. The same play Tony went back to, where the two screeners were on the lane line. I said, close the gate. That's exactly what they ran again. What a final 16 minutes so far for Kyle Guy. Now, Hugs got, has West guarding Kyle Guy. I wonder if he changes and puts Carter on him. Miles out of the trap. West, tough shot. I, I really like the three to two. Shot fakes the best fake you can have in the game because it makes the defense unathletic. They're extended and a wonderful three to two pull up. Miles is now on Cal Guy. Guy left it short. Saved back in by Miles. And here comes West Virginia in a hurry. Miles Leaner. And here comes the West Virginia defense getting back. Guy, quick trigger. Short. He is so quick on that fire. And, and Daxter Miles got his hands on his legs. He is just exhausted right now. Timeout, West Virginia. 3-11 to go. What I can possibly follow this? Well, that's the gate play. He comes through that double screen on the sideline. And the youngster, the shot fake, the pull-up, splash. ESPN's exclusive presentation of college basketball. Time for tonight's game track brought to you by Zales, and they go back and forth. Kyle Guy's been the second half story, Dino. We should celebrate him. We should celebrate Javon Carter and both of these teams as well. To make you want to crowd serve? Me? Yeah. Nah, I'm too old for that. Looked like fun. Is there an age limit for crowd <laughs> serving? 58-56. West is open. Ball three. Great call by 
Bob Huggins coming out of the timeout. He has two seniors. He goes to the sophomore Lamont West because he has the hot hand. Bob Huggins showing a lot of confidence in the sophomore. Another three for Virginia, this time Jerome. Well, the reason they got the three is Wes Harris gambles. Really poor defense. He tries to make the steal with the elbow and leaves Ty Jerome well open, wide open. Be Out solid. second half for Jerome. Both teams be solid on defense. Don't gamble. It's not making the great play. It's eliminated the bad ones at the end of the game. Really tough shot for Wes. Maybe needless as he collects the rebound in the corner and sets up Carter. Two minutes left, two-point game. Longer haul on Carter. Miles catches, shoot, no. And guy the rebound. When you have long shots, of course, you have long rebounds. Your guards have to run those down, and Virginia just did. Jerome walks. There's a timeout on the West Virginia thrives on creating turnovers. There's one for the Mountaineers. They're standing in Morgantown. The ESPN app and a little West of there here, Lamont is having a great night. A, a great night. He's throwing it inside the three-point line. He's throwing it from behind the stripe, the step back. But you know how much confidence Bob Huggins has in him? You see that play right there when he hit that three? They curled off to him. And the guy that curled almost brushed his defender away. But Hugs a lot of, showing a lot of confidence at Lamont West. He's three short of a career high so far tonight. Buck 15 to go, one possession game. And a foul away from the ball. Jerome has his palms out. It's going to be a one and one for West Virginia. At this point in the game, you can't, can't show a lot of emotion to the officials. That just, all that does is drain energy. And it kills your personal morale. You got to just let it go. Next one, next play. Lamont West. It is Lamont West who came in 21 for 29 from the line this year. 72% for the season, got the first. If Virginia wanted to now, with 111 to play, they could go two for one. Odd to hear Virginia wants more possessions. One minute, one minute to play. Jerome wanted guy it was knocked away by Miles. Do you foul here? I, I think you have to get him down what you are right now. Four. Already given up 13 yeah. seconds. Yeah. Should have got him earlier. Tony was calling for it. Quick hands from Miles. Really? And you know what? Miles shortcut the screen, which means he went over the top of the screen. But thank goodness he was able to get a hand on it because if he didn't, that's a three for Cal Guy. Virginia. Timeout, Virginia, after the opening make from Carter. The Mountaineers feel it up by five. There's been a lot of heroes for West Virginia in this game, and especially in the second half. Javon Carter has been really good, Jason. He's just a guy that won't let him lose. When you have a senior that's been through the wars, been through the battles, 
West Virginia's reputation is built on outworking people, being tougher, playing harder. This guy does all of those things. Defensive player of the year last year in the Big 12. On the all Big 12 defensive team three times, and the offense has been rather lethal tonight with 19 on the board for him. Now, Tony Bennett's telling these guys, fellas, one more free throw. Don't assume anything. Let's make sure we box out. The worst thing we could do is not box out on the free throw line. That would be a cardinal sin. And then, either way, it's still two possession game. Miss or make on this free throw right here. And Tony's going to go with his best play. And usually that means it's Cal Guy. Carter, 19 points. He's perfect from the line tonight. You double Kyle Guy if you're West Virginia. You have. But you know what they have to do, Jace? He, he's not a guy that's going to create the play with the ball in his hands. He's a guy that's going to come off a baseline screen. So as he's coming off, what I would do is I would chase him. In other words, what that means is like you're almost playing tag with somebody. You're right behind him. That way you make him curl into the lane. Don't allow him to shoot a three. They're all the inbounder. Guy is up the floor already in the middle of the court. Yeah, he's going to come off of one of these screens on the baseline now. There he goes. He ran into Carter, who chased him everywhere. On the handoff. Hall, no sir. Rebound for Carter. And he's fouled. 14,000 on their feet. Javon Carter in the free throw line for the Mountaineers. Shooting two. Carter in triple double territory tonight. Too long. Still a two possession game. Again, make sure if you're Virginia, you're boxing out. Who's got the shooter? Make sure Carter, you know, Mrs. Long gets an offensive rebound here. He just said, I got you, I got you to one of his teammates, <laughs> and he got him. <laughs> you gotta go. Under 20 seconds. Hall off the screen from Diakite, and Hall has to timeout Virginia. Now we are going to see Virginia press a little bit. Actual press Virginia. <laughs> Five-point game. Don't forget tonight, 11.30 Eastern, after the Jimmy B Classic, UConn and Syracuse. Sports Center with SVP. Wins in December. What do you get out of them for March? We'll find out from Scott. Oklahoma City looking to take that next step and then the Heisman finalists. We'll find out whether or not Lamar Jackson is in there trying to win it a couple times. Sports Center with SVP on ESPN and the ESPN app. And uh, Best Virginia, which one is going to be Best Virginia? And it looks like yellow and blue may be the winners here tonight. Bob Huggins looking for win number 827. And out of the timeout, here comes the pressure. Virginia is going to switch all screens, try to get a five count or a steal, and then if you don't, you got to immediately foul. Got to get it. Carter is fouled by Hall on the way by, so Carter back to the line for two shots. Javon Carter. Javon Carter, the senior out of Chicagoland, with 21 on seven for eight foul shooting. And he came into the game 91%, Jace, 32 for 35. That's such a luxury when you could put the ball in somebody's hands like Carter. End of the game, going to make right decisions, going to make free throws. I, I know Tony Bennett, 
if they lose this, he, he's not going to be happy. But I'm going to tell you something. Two well-coached basketball teams are going to make runs in the NCAA tournament. Teams that believe in their systems. And they just ran into each other tonight. Johnson off the kick. Oh, Miles! What a save! And what a camper for the Mountaineers against Virginia. What a game, Dino. Wow, exceptional basketball game for December. These two teams, their fan base, but well, you could be proud of both of these programs right here. 68-61, the Mountaineers with a victory over the Cavaliers from WVU Coliseum for Dino Gaudio and our entire crew, Jason Benetti. You get to watch Marvin Bagley next. Cameron indoors, St. Francis and Duke on the way as we say so long for Morgantown.